Princess Margaret lived life in the fast lane, but her final years were nothing short of difficult. From personal tragedy, health issues, and overall bad luck, here's the final years of Princess Margaret's life. Let's start with her personal life. After Princess Margaret's marriage to Anthony Armstrong Jones in 1960, everything seemed to be going swimmingly. For a while, the two were at the centre of London's high society. They rubbed shoulders with musicians, attended film premieres and concerts, and by all accounts were the most sought-after hosts throwing the most coveted parties in town. Well, the people are ugly and dull. These people were amusing, attractive. Despite all of the glamour, behind the scenes, Margaret's union to Armstrong Jones began to come apart at the seams. Eventually, she was caught having an affair in 1973 with Roderick Llewellyn, who was 18 years younger than her. In 1974, Margaret allegedly suffered a nervous breakdown due to her failing marriage, which reportedly resulted in her family planting a bug in her room to keep tabs on her. Multiple reports also surfaced that the princess attempted suicide after she sought help for depression. As Princess Margaret revealed, I was so exhausted because of everything that all I wanted to do was sleep. And I did, right through to the following afternoon. After the affair and her divorce to Armstrong Jones, Margaret's health reportedly took a significant turn for the worse. In 1978, Margaret was diagnosed with pneumonia while she was in the South Pacific. Her condition was drastic enough that she was airlifted to a hospital in neighbouring Sydney, Australia. Just two years later, she was back in the hospital to have a benign skin lesion removed. While smoking was common back then, the princess's choice of smokes were Chesterfield cigarettes, and she often paired them with a whiskey or gin beverage, according to Wales Online. However, due in part to her habits, Margaret developed laryngitis, pneumonia and bronchitis throughout her life. Such a history of health issues plagued with heavy smoking and drinking caught up with Princess Margaret by the 1990s. In the first half of the decade, she was once again hospitalised with pneumonia and transported to King Edward VII Hospital after residing with friends just outside of the City of London. Throughout the decade, Margaret started residing at her property in the Caribbean far more than in England, maintaining her partying ways and causing a bit of an uproar among the British public while doing so. But in 1998, things came to a halt when the princess survived her first stroke. After three weeks at her Caribbean property on the island of Mystique, Margaret was enjoying a meal with friends when she first started feeling off, and her head was hurting, according to the New York Times. Her headaches were followed by dizziness and then by pains in her chest. She was transported to a hospital in nearby Barbados to get the all-clear to fly back to England. Margaret experienced a mild stroke and gave up smoking for a time. She appeared in rather good spirits when she was spotted leaving the hospital, walking to the car on her own, but refusing to comment to clamouring reporters. Thank you. Margaret was back at her holiday home in Mustique just a year following her stroke when she seriously scolded her feet getting into a hot bath. The news was confirmed by a palace spokesperson who told the press, She was seen by a local doctor in Mustique and came back to London a week after the accident. She is now recuperating at Windsor, but these things do take some time to heal. Adding that the princess was staying positive amid the accident, the palace spokesperson further noted that Margaret was being aided by a nurse during her recovery. The accident left Margaret unable to walk for a period of time, and questions about the incident and what truly happened have remained unanswered. By January 2001, Princess Margaret suffered yet another stroke. At the time, Margaret was transported once again to King Edward VII Hospital after she stopped eating. Her lack of appetite was connected to a possible second stroke, and she remained at the hospital for observation. Speaking to the BBC after visiting his aunt, the then Prince Charles told reporters that despite the health scare, Margaret was making daily improvements and had even started eating meals here and there. It was rather a sight to behold, as Charles had his arm in a sling after fracturing his shoulder. The royals certainly looked like they were worse for wear. As Charles revealed to the press, 
She is coming on very well. She's much better. The BBC further noted at the time that Charles was the highest ranking member of the royal family to travel to the hospital to see Margaret. Her daughter, Lady Sarah Chateau, was also seen visiting the princess, bringing along her children, Samuel and Arthur. Unlike Charles, Sarah did not comment on her mother's condition or improvement. The only other rumbling came from doctors, who stated through the palace that Margaret was not considered a critical case. I don't like the sound of that cough. <coughs> That's fine. And you've been struggling with your chest for a while. Just two months later, the princess was back in the hospital after suffering a third stroke. In March 2001, Margaret developed similar symptoms as her previous stroke when she was hospitalized, traveling once again to King Edward VII Hospital to receive around-the-clock care. After receiving the all-clear from doctors, Margaret was allowed to travel back to her home in Kensington Palace. A statement from palace officials released at the time read, it will be some while before the extent of her recovery can be determined. She is happy to stay among her own things where she is comfortable and among her family. In the aftermath of the stroke, the health incident was officially noted as a minor attack, but the impacts of the third stroke certainly showed themselves with time. Margaret's function on her left side was impacted by her third stroke as well as her vision, and she required consistent nursing care at home. It was also alleged that the princess became incredibly distant after her third stroke, rarely leaving her bed and denying both food and the company of others. In the last years of her life, Princess Margaret did not radiate the same kind of energy that she was so often known for. Instead, she was rarely spotted in public and relied on the use of a wheelchair. But in early 2002, the princess suffered yet another stroke this time with very little room for the royals to cover up its seriousness. The Buckingham Palace released a statement saying, Princess Margaret suffered a further stroke yesterday afternoon. She developed cardiac problems during the night and was taken from Kensington Palace to the King Edward VII Hospital at 2.30 a.m. Lord Linley and Lady Sarah were with her and the Queen was kept fully informed throughout the night. The news, though tragic, did not come as a huge surprise to the British public. Many newspapers had jumped on the Margaret Health bandwagon, reporting that her isolation from public royal life was due to her ongoing health issues, both physical and mental. Princess Margaret's fourth stroke would be her last. It was with immense sorrow that Queen Elizabeth announced to the British press and public that her younger sister, Princess Margaret, died due to complications of a stroke on February 9, 2002. A statement from the Buckingham Palace read, The Queen, with great sadness, has asked for the following announcement to be made immediately. Her beloved sister, Princess Margaret, died peacefully in her sleep this morning at 6.30am in the King Edward VII Hospital. Her children, Lord Linley and Lady Sarah Chateau were at her side. At just 71 years old, Margaret's life had caught up to her. In the immediate aftermath of her death, Margaret was mourned by those near and far, with then Prime Minister Tony Blair releasing a statement mourning the loss, according to the New York Times. The country of Scotland significantly mourned Margaret's passing, with the Scottish Secretary Helen Liddell stating, I deeply regret the death of Princess Margaret and send my condolences to Her Majesty the Queen Mother and Princess Margaret's two children. Her words were echoed by First Minister Jack McConnell, who also shared the sentiment that Scotland will be saddened by Princess Margaret's death. McConnell noted that she served her country valiantly and sent his regards. Princess Margaret's funeral was held on the 50th anniversary of her father's own state funeral. Margaret requested to be cremated, a rarity among the royal family, and a private funeral service was held in the wake of her death. About 450 people, a mix of family, friends and official guests travelled to St George's Chapel on the Windsor Castle property to pay tribute to the princess. But the streets, naturally, were lined with public mourners. As she requested to be cremated, Margaret's ashes were later placed in a casket and she was laid to rest alongside other late members of the royal family in the official vault at St George's Chapel. 
In the aftermath of Princess Margaret's death, many reports tied her health issues and ultimate passing to her smoking and drinking habits, both of which were heavily documented throughout her life. Except that came out wrong. I didn't mean I'm a vice queen. Her close friends, however, were having none of that and came out swinging to defend the princess. Close confidants came out in full force in the weeks after Margaret's death to defend her honor and tell the press that the princess indulged in life's frivolities like anyone else. One friend of hers revealed to The Guardian, so many of the assessments of the princess have completely missed the point. They rely upon the unwillingness of her friends to speak out on her behalf. I have seen far too much suggesting that Margaret was an unashamed hedonist who spent her life partying. It truly misunderstands her. Acknowledging that the late royal did indulge in drinking and smoking, the same friend argued that such habits were normalized in Margaret's day and age, asserting, I don't believe she was addicted to alcohol. It's preposterous. She just got very used to it. If you or anyone you know is having suicidal thoughts, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline by dialing 988 or by calling 1-800-273-TALK-8255.